Last week, the House voted to put whole milk back into public schools. For the last 11 years, whole milk has been federally banned due to concerns over child obesity. Since 2012, the nation's lunch ladies have been forced to serve 1% or non-fat milk to the nation's school children. So why do so many lawmakers want to bring whole milk back? Was banning whole milk really a sweet idea? Or has it since spoiled? Find out here. Got milk. So first off, why does the federal government get to decide what's in our school lunches? Well, it all begins in 1946 when President Harry Truman signed the National School Lunch Act, which granted federal money to schools to serve underprivileged kids free or reduced lunch. In exchange, the schools had to serve food that followed federal nutritional standards set by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This put the federal government into the business of school lunches, and now Congress and the USDA could regulate what kids were eating for lunch in schools. Fast forward to 2010 when Congress passed the Healthy, Hunger-Free Kids Act, which instructed the USDA to update federal guidelines determined by expert nutritionists to make the food healthier. This paved the way for a new federal regulation in 2012, which only allowed for low-fat or fat-free milk to be served in schools. The concern was over the amount of saturated fat in whole milk. Unsaturated fat is generally considered to be a, quote, good fat. Good fats are easy for the body to break down and can actually improve people's overall health. The problem is with saturated and trans fats, which are much harder for the body to break down, and so overconsumption can lead to cardiovascular problems. Whole milk has saturated fat, the bad kind. Oh, and fun fact, whole milk is actually only 3.25% milk fat. This is why low fat options start at 2%. That might not seem like a huge difference, but it is in both taste and nutrition. Low-fat milk had all the same nutrients as whole milk without the additional fat. And so, per recommendations from the Institute of Medicine, the Obama administration proposed a rule to ban whole milk in all schools that received aid from the NSLP, which is virtually all schools, including many private ones. From then on, the maximum amount of fat allowed in milk would be just 1%. The new regulations didn't just ban whole milk in schools, it also set new nutritional standards for all foods in order to reduce intake of sodium, saturated fat, and eliminate trans fat. This all coincided with Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign, which was an effort to promote healthy eating habits and physical activity among the nation's youth. This new federal regulation came at the advice of numerous nutrition experts. However, they were not very popular with many high schoolers who claimed that it made the food taste worse and it was less filling. The hashtag thanks Michelle Obama was trending on numerous social media sites. Some seconds, I, I need to get some food today. My friends are at the corner store getting junk so they don't waste away. Students at this Kansas high school creating a viral video protesting the new calorie cutting menus in their cafe. So yeah, these new regulations weren't exactly popular, but hey, they're regulations. They're not designed to be popular. They exist to make people safer, healthier, and more secure. So did they? A study from the Harvard School of Public Health found that although the legislation didn't have a significant impact on childhood obesity overall, in fact, childhood obesity has gone up since 2010, it did find that it significantly reduced obesity among children in poverty. This makes sense since poor kids rely a lot more on school lunches than rich kids. Okay, so why is Congress trying to bring back whole milk? Well, the dairy industry was never a fan of this regulation. They were worried that it would cause children to like milk less. When you reduce the fat from milk, the milk tends to taste worse. So the industry was concerned that if kids don't like the milk served in the cafeteria, they would be less likely to ask for milk when their parents go to the grocery store and be less likely to buy milk as adults. Also, uh, schools buy about 8% of all milk produced in the United States, so allowing whole milk back in schools could lead to more profits for milk producers. A bipartisan group of House Republicans and some Democrats, along with the dairy industry, claimed that these regulations were created based off of outdated research that linked whole milk consumption to obesity. They instead point to newer research that shows that drinking whole milk is actually just as healthy as drinking skim milk. In fact, one analysis from 2019 showed that kids who drank whole milk were actually less obese than kids who drank low-fat or fat-free milk. However, the authors weren't able to prove cause and effect. Look. I spent a long time researching for this video, and I've basically come to the conclusion that there really is no consensus among experts as to whether or not skim milk is significantly healthier for you than whole milk. Keep in mind that a lot of research on milk is in whole or in part funded by the dairy industry, so a lot of these studies are inherently biased. Regardless of what the science says, the House moved forward with the Whole Milk for Healthy Kids Act, which would allow whole milk back into schools alongside low and reduced fat options. 
Lots of public health advocacy groups oppose the legislation because of concerns over child health. They point to the mountain of already existing evidence that shows that whole milk is significantly worse at reducing cardiovascular diseases and childhood obesity than skim and reduced fat milk. Milk is the second largest source of saturated fat for kids aged 6 to 18. Just one cup of milk contains a quarter of the daily value of a person's recommended saturated fat intake. These concerns have been expressed in a letter sent to Congress signed by the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, the American Public Health Association, Balanced Incorporated, California Food Policy Advocate, Center for Science and the Public Interest, Change Lab Solutions, First Focus Campaign for Children, Food Corps, Healthy School Food Maryland, Healthy Schools Campaign, John Hopkins Center for a Livable Future, Kids Healthy, the Laura M. Chis Center for Food Education and Policy, Moms Rising, the National Wick Association, the Public Health Institute, and the Society for Nutrition, Education, and Behavior. So yeah, there's not that much dissent. <sighs> so, how do the nation's school children feel about bringing back whole milk? Well, turns out most of them don't have very strong opinions. Do you support bringing whole milk back into schools? Um, I don't know. I don't think I know enough about either side. Do you support Congress's plan to put uh, whole milk back in schools? I do not, because I, I honestly hate whole milk. It's, it's disgusting. What about the like, concerns about obesity and health and stuff? Uh, when I think about like school foods, I don't really put like the two and two together like I don't think of like really like fat kids and then putting it to like school foods like I just think it's just another way for kids to eat because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't bring food to school mm -hmm. simply because like either they don't have food at home that they can bring mm -hmm. and then it's just easy access to have it here mm -hmm. and then also not to mention that our school doesn't allow kids that are aren't juniors or seniors to leave campus to get food of their own mm -hmm. so uh, I think it's just, uh, it's a better alternative. Joey! Oh, you're already going? Do you prefer fat-free milk or whole milk? Um, whole milk. Why? Because it tastes better. Okay. You... It's better for me. So you support, uh, bringing it back into schools? I do support that. Okay. Um, what about concerns over childhood obesity? I think worrying about whole milk versus fat-free milk in schools is the least of our concerns when it comes to childhood obesity. That's, like, a whole different problem. That's, like, comes with, like, the system that has been created in America surrounding food, and I think milk in school is the least of our worries in, like, solving that issue. Yeah. Do you prefer whole milk or fat-free milk? Um, fat-free milk being, like, 2% or... 1% or 0%? Or well, I just... At home, I drink 2% milk, but I have uh, had whole milk at home, and you know, I'm like 6'5", so big milk, whole milk, 2% milk with fat in it has been beneficiary to my health and well-being. I would say that. Do, are you concerned about um, childhood obesity, which was the original reason it was banned? I think there's a lot deeper causes of childhood obesity when what kind of milk you drink. You know, kids aren't playing outside, and you know, I think it's up to the parents with their diet at home. Liam, do you support Congress uh, putting uh, whole milk back into schools? Yes, I do. Why? Uh, because students ought to have the choice of whether they want to do milk uh, whole or they want it 2% or if they want it skim. This is just a simple issue of freedom of choosing milk on our school children. What about concerns over childhood obesity? Uh, I think if we want to talk about childhood obesity, we need to look at fast food. We don't need to blame whole milk for this. We need to look at the other fatty, sugary foods that we're feeding our children. So guys, whole milk is banned in schools, federally. The House voted to put it back in schools. Do you support this? I support that. Do you prefer whole milk over uh, fat-free milk? I do. I do prefer Hell yes, whole milk is good. Strong Why? Milk. Why? Because it's got more calories. And I need that because you need. I need three thousand calories to maintain my body weight, so I need the I need the bulking calories. Okay, okay, okay. You know got it, got it. Regardless as to whether or not low-fat milk is actually that much better for you, there is one pretty solid argument that supports the idea of bringing back whole milk, that it would reduce food waste. But the result of all that healthy food, say many parents and kids, is a dramatic increase in plate waste. Sometimes the food is just nasty. In fact, the only known study of food waste under the new guidelines contains a startling statistic. Kids are now throwing away twice as much food as last year. If you just plop the vegetables and plop the fruit there and don't do anything else, waste goes up. Waste goes up about 97%. Have you ever thrown out uh, fat-free milk because of the taste? Yeah and the texture, mm -hmm. and the warmth, mm -hmm. and everything warm. about it. It's disgusting. Okay, all right. Thank you. One of the arguments is that fat-free milk might be better for you, but a lot of kids just don't drink it, and they just gravitate towards, like, like soda and stuff like that. Think it's a valid concern? Uh, yeah, I do think so, especially because, um, 
they offer soda at school. Like we have a vending machine with like sugary drinks. So if you're really concerned about childhood obese, obesity, maybe don't do that. Mm -hmm. so. Good point. All right. Have you ever, uh, do you ever have you bought lunch at school? I have bought lunch. Have you thrown out the milk because it tastes bad because it's fat free? Well, to be well, honest, I've never tried them though. Okay. <laughs> Have any, has anyone ever like thrown out? Well, yeah, I had my milk today yeah. here. It's not good, not at all. Well, whole milk, you know, tastes good, builds bones, strong bones, and yeah. It's Couldn't fat-free milk also do the same thing? No. No. <laughs> it doesn't have the same. It has the same amount of calcium. Well, it just has less fat. I don't like drinking it because it tastes bad. So if I don't drink as much, it doesn't affect me. This is the main argument. People are saying that even though fat-free milk might be healthier than a normal milk, a lot of kids just don't drink it, so they just go to like soda or something. That's yeah. worse. Subscribe to Huggy's channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I myself will admit that I have thrown out milk that I was otherwise forced to buy because it just didn't taste that good, and that probably led me to consume less healthy food items. But look, let's be honest here, the reason why Congress is pushing so hard for this is not because they're passionate about reducing food waste or because they've really looked into the studies, it's because they're paid off by the dairy industry. I mean, think about it, Congress is about to go out of session for the year. We as a nation are dealing with a lot of problems, and this is what House Republicans want to prioritize? The nutrients in whole milk, like protein, calcium, and vitamin D, provide the fuel Santa needs to travel the whole globe in one night. Whole milk is the unsung hero of his Christmas journey. Protein helps build and repair Santa's muscles. Hoisting heavy sacks of gifts up and down the chimney is no easy task. Calcium is vital for strong bones. It is calcium that keeps Santa strong and sturdy as he dashes from rooftop to rooftop. Big Dairy has always pulled the strings in Washington. The government has been subsidizing the industry since the 40s. During World War II, government purchased powdered and canned milk would be shipped to soldiers overseas in Europe and Japan. But demand for milk declined sharply after the war, and the dairy industry was still producing at the same rate. This led to huge surpluses of milk. Rather than producing less milk, the dairy industry convinced the government to just buy up all of the surplus milk to keep dairy prices stable. Some of this milk would end up being turned into cheese and butter and stored in large warehouses across the country. The government would end up spending billions of dollars on surplus dairy every year. Warehouses were overflowing by the late 1970s. Ronald Reagan, good conservative government cutter that he was, put an end to this program and gave out all of the cheese to the poor as part of the food stamp program. Yes, this was a real thing. It was called government cheese. Look it up. Both the dairy industry, along with state and federal government, have played a role in marketing milk as a superfood. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? Hello? Hello, for $10,000, who shot... Excuse me? I'm afraid your time is almost... These campaigns appeared to be about promoting public health, but were really about increasing the demand for milk, and thus profits. Don't get me wrong, milk is still a delicious and nutritious beverage, but it's not magic juice. There are plenty of other food items that offer similar levels of nutrition. Milk became a staple due to decades of government subsidies, food programs, and education campaigns lobbied for by the dairy industry. Even the original National School Lunch Act was itself partially a giveaway to the dairy industry since it required whole milk to be served in schools for the first time. The school lunch program is essential. It feeds millions of kids across America. For many of them, it's their only real meal of the day. The food that we provide them with must be both nutritious and filling. The contents of each meal should be determined by experts who go through a lengthy research process. The thing about this bill is that it completely bypasses that process in order to carve out a specific exception for milk. It sets a dangerous precedent where politicians and special interests get to determine what's in our school lunches instead of experts working in the interests of children. It's true that dietary guidelines can be slow to update. Whole milk might be better for you than skim milk, but is this really a pressing issue? Most kids don't really seem to care about it, at least not anymore. The bill still has to pass the Senate, and really, that's up to Chuck Schumer. Biden is not indicated yet as to whether or not he'll sign it. But one thing does remain clear. It's that our government will continue to prop up the dairy industry, for better or for worse.
Before I start talking, I just want to take a quick drink of this super delicious milk. Ah. 